Hey, David. Hello out there. David here with uh, Electric Motors. And um, I can't figure out how to do this in the landscape mode. Uh, so I wanted to come back um, and show you this bus that's just about to, sh well, it's shipping today. So I had to do a really quick walk around uh, video and uh, operational video for our uh, client. Um, so this is the 19, let me flip this thing around if I can figure out how to do it. Okay. This is our third bus, 1966, velvet green, 13, window. And it's going to be headed up to Seattle in a few hours. And I wanted to get some shots of it. And I um, thought it'd be fun to include you guys in a little walk around video that I'm doing. Give you a closer look at how our builds are put together. And um, because with each car, when it's shipped to a distance, I'd like to do a video uh, so our client can figure out how it works. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward, but for some of our clients, they haven't uh, even been in an old Volkswagen before. So, you know, there's some different things. Check this out. This is your window opened, closed. Little latches, safari windows. Uh, a lot of new things in this vehicle for, you know, for some of our clients who haven't had one. Um, this one is going uh, to a client who had one back in the day, but uh, I have a feeling she's, she may have forgotten how a few things operate. So this is a, a walkthrough and it has the short middle seat and lots of space for lots of stuff. It's not a sunroof. It's a, uh, it's, uh, I don't know what they call it. It's a standard deluxe bus. Uh, this is your AC. <laughs> Not really, it's just your fresh air. Uh, this is basically your ventilated, ventilator, open and closed. Um, that's about it. So let's get right into it. Uh, keys go in. And uh, I'll be happy to answer some of your questions uh, when I when I get done. Um, two keys for this. Normally the car would have come with uh, one key, but we have two here um, because the ignition is not the uh, uh, stock ignition. So one key to open up the doors and one key for the ignition. When you turn it on, I don't know if you can hear that, but you'll hear a little click coming from the middle seat. Um, Oh, and then if you left the stereo on, that'll come on too. Okay, that's something, that's not stock, that's something that we add. <laughs> uh, I like to put a nice stereo system in these. It's really fun driving a 50, 60 year old car with a, a thumping uh, bass stereo system. So this is a standard dash. For the most part, it looks like a proper 1960s uh, microbus uh, dash not much to it clock ashtray of course you had those in the 60s speedometer fuel gauge um, what we add to this uh, a few bells and whistles literally um, the car is on right now you can't hear it and uh, we're in a San Diego alley and uh, it's pretty silent so we actually have a little pedestrian uh, warning bell to let people know that we're coming that's the bell and since this guy is going up to uh, Seattle uh, and uh, they have some issues with deer so we actually have uh, a deer whistle here this also doubles as a, a backup signal um, it's we haven't used it in any other car this is the first one I just thought it was kind of neat to include. Uh, we experimented with it and really like the way that it works and we'll find out in a few months if it really does what it's supposed to do. Uh, wipers, turn them left and right uh, for off and on. And then under here, it's a little bit hard to see, but uh, you can just reach in here. There's a variable speed switch right in there and that uh, controls the wiper speed. I'll just jump into the wiper right now because with Safari windows, 
check the wipers out. Uh, you have to engage them. These windows, of course, open and close, but uh, this is you have to get out of the car and do this. Um, you have to engage the, uh, the wiper blade like this. So that's operational. If you turn the wiper, you have to not turn on the wiper switch when your um, wiper blades are like this. So you can't be driving along and a rainstorm comes and then you turn on your wipers. Uh, you have to be a little proactive and check the weather uh, or pull over. Standard speedometer, nothing different here. Uh, here's our fuel gauge. This is the first uh, analog um, uh, gauge that we have used. Normally we put these in and we have some kind of very utilitarian uh, state of charge meter. This still is going to tell us what our state of charge is in the car. And um, uh, the bus with the battery pack that we have in here gives us about 80, 90 mile range. So uh, each one of these little tick marks is about 10 miles. So 10, 20, 30, 40 would be uh, halfway. 50, 60, 70, 80 would be fully charged. So this comes off and on when you turn the car off and on. And that's an indicator that the car is on. Another indicator is the, uh, ah, the stereo. <laughs> and uh, you have a little base. Let me tuck this in here. Have a little base uh, knob to adjust that. Uh, so if you, depending on what you're listening to, gives you some control over the sound. Uh, lights, uh, all the way out is on. Halfway out is these cool little, get back out here. These are little driving lights. They're kind of hard to see right now, but uh, look kind of cool at dusk. I just have a little mat in here to protect the, the floor from my dirty feet. Uh, so lights off and on, hazard switch. And what we have over here, next one is a heater. All the way out is full heat. Halfway out is half heat. So that's an all electric heater and it really warms the cabin up super quick. It doesn't smell like gasoline. Really wonderful to have. Um, the only other knob here on the dash is the forwards and reverse switch. So we still retain the uh, standard uh, gear shift, standard four speed transmission. Some of our car, some of our new Beetles are going to have a two speed transmission, but I like to have four in the in the bus. Um, so this will let you go forwards and backwards in any gear that you're in. So you can be in second gear or third gear and uh, go uh, forwards, click that, and then you go into reverse. So you go in reverse in second gear. You don't have to mess around with finding reverse way down here or way up there. Um, First gear, we hardly ever use it, just on steep hills. Second gear is normal around town driving, up to about um, uh, 30 miles an hour. Third gear is good up to about 45 miles an hour. And then fourth gear, really, I don't use it until I get on the highway. It's like an overdrive after 45, 50 miles an hour. Depending on your load, terrain, all this stuff, the, the incline of the hill. Some hills with this bus, um, it kind of loses a little bit of power in fourth gear with this transmission. So you can put in third gear and you can fly up the hill in 50, up to 55 in third gear, uh, won't be an issue. And then neutral. So most, most of the time around town, I'm just in second gear, uh, which is down here. And um, that's about, it with the transmission this really kind of gives you selectable torque so going up a steep hill a really steep driveway i would put in first second gear up to 25 
third gear up to 45, and then fourth gear is for the, for the highway. Um, the neat thing uh, with the electric motor is that uh, you don't have to, let me get this, let me get this out of here. You don't have to um, engage the clutch when you're coming to a stop. Um, the only time you do use the clutch is when you are shifting and moving. But if you're just driving around town, you can... Uh, um, I'm going to start off here in second gear. I'm in second gear. I'm just going to tap the throttle and uh, we're going to start moving. I'll come to a stop. don't have to declutch. I do have to put my foot on the brake though because the car will roll back. Um, it's basically, when it comes to a stop, the motor's not spinning, there's nothing to hold it back except the brake. So you do have to use that when you're uh, at a stop. Check this out. This is the little uh, church key that they gave you back in the day. This would open up your fuel flap. On some cars it would open up the um, motor bay, engine bay. Uh, we don't have to worry about that because um, since we're plugging this in nearly every day, we uh, just rig this up with a magnet. So this just opens and closes with a magnet. This is your charge port. And our client has a level 2 charger installed, but a lot of our cars, all of our cars will charge with a simple level one. The difference between level one and level two, level one just uses a standard uh, 120 volt outlet. So you can plug this car in anywhere in uh, um, you know, the country uh, that has a standard uh, plug. And then the other end of it is the standard J1772 charge plug. So this is what you'll find on all public chargers out in the wild. And you can just plug this in like that. That's it. The other end goes into any into your, you know, plug it in next to your kitchen toaster. Comes out. That's it. So with the with the. Um, Level one charger. It's going to take. It is going to be slow going with the 32 uh, kilowatt hour battery pack that we have in here, and um, it will take about uh, 13, 14, maybe 15 hours to charge up from zero uh, with the uh, plugged into a regular 110 outlet. But we have 5,000 watts of uh, charging power here. Uh, those black boxes up there are our chargers. They charge the battery and um, on a hundred uh, household current um, one of them is working at 50 percent but on a level two um, they'll, uh, both of them will be operating so it will only take about three four and a half hours to, to charge up the car from zero and you know most of the time you're not at zero you're uh, at 50% or 40% or something like that. So it's a pretty quick uh, charging. And uh, that's what all the, uh, the public chargers out in the wild use. They'll use a level two charging. And our client is having a level two charger uh, installed at the house so they can charge uh, extra quick. But um, it's been at my house for about a month now. Uh, we've been road testing it and uh, I've used this charger, this very charger, to test it, and uh, it works great. And honestly, that's all that I've used to, to charge the car to drive it. Uh, we still have a 12-volt uh, battery back here. And there's even a, uh, there's a little trickle charger that's hooked up into the battery pack, and I'll show that to you in a minute. Uh, well, I won't show you the battery, the batteries, but I'll show you where they're located. Um, I'll just do it right now. So our batteries in the bus are really hiding in plain sight. That's it. That's our battery 
pack uh, for the buses. Currently we're putting them in the center middle seat. It's a custom designed uh, seat, all brand new construction and uh, nice and cushy. Has seat belts, has a little gauge on it. That's gonna tell us what the uh, uh, what the, the, the battery pack uh, actual voltage is. You really won't need to refer to this as a USB plug. You can plug in your iPhone or whatever you want. Uh, so this is a 32 kilowatt hour battery pack. And that's uh, getting charged from those chargers in the back. Uh, so when they're going, you'll hear the fans come on and um, that'll let you know that uh, that it's charging up. Uh, in that battery box I showed you earlier, there's a, a 12 volt battery trickle charger. So your 12 volt is really uh, never going to die. Even if it did, like if you left your stereo on or something and all the lights, um, the battery, uh, even if it was dead, you could, it, it would actually get charged in about 15 minutes from the Tesla battery pack. The battery pack is basically always on. So, um, so you really should not be stranded. Uh, all these windows open. Let me check my notes and see. I feel like I've probably missed something. Very standard setup has a roof rack up on top a spare tire we have a jack uh, there's the AC motor this is about an 85 horsepower motor so it's about double what the car originally had um, the green fluid the green fluid is our uh, cooling system for the uh, the motors controller this is kind of like uh, I like to think of it like a you know digital carburetor you have the motor and you have the uh, uh, controller. This is cooled. This works best at uh, peak performance when it's kept cool. So that's what the coolant does. It's off right now. Let me turn it on. Actually got kicked off because I plugged it in. So let me turn this off. Turn it on again. Well, <laughs> I wanted to say I like this deck because it's still, uh, they're kind of phasing out decks that play CDs. This plays CDs. Um, and I've made a lot of them over the years. So I like to have that. It also has Bluetooth, USB, all that cool stuff. So now the car is on. And you can see that uh, the fluid in the reservoir is spinning around. And uh, that's about it. This all looks very pretty, but most of the time you're not going to see it. Let's see, what else did I leave out? This is a true rock walkthrough. All right, I guess maybe VW was the first one to offer this and then every minivan afterwards came out with it. But it's literally so you can walk through here and you can get to the kids in the back seat. <laughs> uh, let's see, I had a, uh, a list here of stuff I wanted to cover and I think I covered them all. So uh, if you have any, I'm going to take a look at the, uh, uh, how can I go through here and see if anybody had any questions. What's the size of the pack? I think I answered that. It's a 32 kilowatt pack and this bus it's about um, gives the bus about 80 to not 90 mile range a little bit bigger than what we put in the Beatles but the bus is a lot heavier so uh, you know just doesn't go as far someone says cool deer whistle <laughs> it is cool it's 12 volt you can put it in any car uh, I really like using it as a backup signal I'm just scrolling through all the uh, the comments and um, seeing if anybody had any questions. I'm going to sign off in a second. If anyone else has any questions, uh, 
uh, you know, ask me on Instagram. Also, my email is David. Let me flip this around. So my email is uh, David at electric.com. Let me get these people. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm David at electric.com. You can ask me any questions in the um, Someone asked us, how's the acceleration? Really? Double the horsepower, uh, 120 pound-feet of torque. So it's awesome, and you kind of have selectable acceleration. Uh, uh, first gear is insane. I don't recommend it unless you're going up a big hill. And then second gear is, you know, get really quick off the line, um, get into traffic very quickly. So that's really nice to have. I think that's about it. <laughs> yeah, we should have we should have Matt from Smoking Tire come and uh, he'd have to be in dirt to smoke the tires on this. The the, the tires really don't smoke on on this uh, car, but they do on the bugs for sure. Okay, I am gonna sign off if I can push the right button. Sorry, this is like the second live video I did. So thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you later.